Okay, everybody, I think I told you in my last video I locked the keys in this truck again. And had just happened to get this. I showed you this too, I think, this door handle with the keypad in it from the factory. This truck is an XLT and remote keyless entry. Let me get my key here. See, remote keyless entry is standard on XLT, but the keypad is not. It is a $75 option. I don't, why somebody wouldn't get it, I don't know. Whoever got this truck, they stuck this stick-on keypad on here. From This is a dealer add-on. It just sticks on, and it's got a battery in there that you can't change. And it hasn't worked. Like, it quit right after I got it. And I'm going to attempt to get it unstuck off of here. And I'm not going to spare you with that because I'm probably going to have to take a heat gun and heat it up or something. I don't know. I've, I've had it popped apart before to see if I could get to a battery and nobody, I couldn't see where a battery existed. So I'm going to get this off real quick and then I'll come back and I'm going to show you guys how to change this door handle out to the keypad one. And the Ford dealer couldn't get me in for two weeks. And I had heard about this on Ford forums before where you could buy this thing it's called Forescan. It, it's a software, and you, you could have like two months. And I did download it and put it on the computer, but I am not going to lie. You guys are going to be with me the first time to go in here and try to do this. You have to go into the as-built data. And I just realized that the guy on that forums actually did say Ford on it. And you could see right here where somebody put paint over that Ford. So I'm going to clean that off and see if I can have Ford on it. But anyway, um, I pl I did plug this into the truck last Saturday just to see if it would come up and look like what they're showing that it should as far as the as-built data. And um, I had copied this off a long time ago because I did this one other time for a customer. And it tells you what line you go on here in the BCM, the 7261501. Uh, this is what the line is going to look like um, with the, let's see, for those, okay. Without the keypad, it looks like this. Four zeros, zero one, zero one, four five. And then for those with the keypad, the block looks like this. It's so the only ones that really change is the last two digits. You well, this digit changes. See, it's all zeros. Let's let me look again. Okay, as built data, remote keyless entry, and no door pad. Okay, so if you don't have a if you don't have the keypad, it's all zeros zero one zero one four five. So you're going to put in this first section of all zeros, you're going to change that zero, the last one to a one, and you're going to change this four, five, you're going to put a four, six, you're just going to change the six. So we're going to put a, a one in this first part. We're not going to do anything with the center part. And we're just going to change the six, the five to a six. So I'm a little bit nervous about it, but I've watched quite a few videos on it. So we'll see what happens. Let me get this keypad off of here. The stick on one and then we'll i'll show you how to change the door handle okay just so you know this is what i'm going through now i've got this heated up with a heat gun and it still really doesn't want to come off that great but i'm going to keep working at it and see if i can get it cleaned up and we'll get the door handle changed and see what happens all right i got that off i used some rubbing alcohol to soften that stuff up i can still see where it was a little bit but I could polish it if I want to, but honestly, I mean, this truck's got scratches and stuff. I just, I don't really care about this truck. I care about it, but I mean, like it's starting to rust out anyway. I just want the convenience of a keypad. So we're not going to worry about seeing a little bit of where that stick on keypad was. So I'm going to get this set up on a tripod. I have had plenty of these door panels off that I'm not worried about that. I will tell you that we have to pop this out, this little thing here. Let me see. Um, get behind it 
with I'm using this pick I'll just wait till I've got both hands so I can hold this open so we're gonna pop this little plastic thing out and there's a I believe an eight millimeter I've seen different sizes but I think it's eight millimeter bolt back there and we're gonna pop this little cover out there's an eight millimeter bolt under it I think they have I have seen it to be 10 millimeter most of them are eight and then down here I believe these there's one here and one here is I believe six millimeters so I'm gonna set this up on a tripod and you guys can watch me take it off this here we have to pop out let's see you might be able to do that holding this just get under here with this thing and pry up in the front and in the back there's clips in the front and back and we'll unplug that so let me get it set up on the tripod hey after i finished this video i thought i'd throw this in here I did take some of that same rubbing alcohol that I took that sticky stuff off from the keypad and wiped that paint off of this, and it does say Ford, so they must have been in some kind of trouble, like copyright, using that Ford oval, but I feel better now that it says Ford. So, you guys are about to see what happens with this keypad. Okay, let's, let's see what happens here. We're going to get this unplugged, get it out of the way. Um, like I said, we're going to pull this back just to get behind this black piece, this cover, and just pull out on it. This pops off. We've got this. I'm going to lay this plastic piece with this bolt, and it does look like an 8 millimeter. And you know, I always tell you not to use power tools on your door panels and stuff, but this bolt and this bolt, I've, I've suffered with these in the junkyard. They turn so hard with ratchets and stuff, so you're allowed to use it on these. Just be careful going back in. Um, now, I'm going to change to a different pick here. And I'm going to pry this little plastic cover out of here. They should give you a little access, but they don't. And you're pretty much going to mark it up a little bit, likely. That's not too bad. Okay, I got that one out. I'll lay it over on this side. And this bolt looks a little bit different than that one, but it is an 8. It's got a big washer on it. So I'm going to lay it with that cover so we know where it went. Now, let's see if this is a six. I'm pretty sure it is. Yep. Now we're just going to lift straight up on the door panel. It has hooks that are holding it down. Don't ever pull straight out on it because you'll break them. We got to disconnect the mirror switch, which you're basically, you're not going to be able to see it, but you're just squeezing a little tab just like this. You feel up under there and pull a tab and pull it down. I just did it last week in the junkyard. And then we've got to disconnect the cable from the door handle. I'll kind of show you what that's about once I get this off. And I can't show you while I'm doing it. Remember, straight up, reach around here and just feel for that squeeze tab for the mirror plug. So that's undone. Now, you got to just, you can see this when you get in here. You're just going to push in on two little tabs. To release this cable and you're just going to pull it back spin it around I 
hate not showing you. Um, right here. Dang it, this thing's in the way. But this tab right here, there's two little tabs on this cable that you, you squeeze and you pull it straight out of this hole and then they spin this around and just take the cable up out of the door handle and the door panel is then loose. And I probably just plumb screwed that up for you guys, but let's hope not. Now, we're going to take this top plug out here because there's a bolt here. And that, I believe, is an 11 millimeter. And there's two inside here we got to get to. I don't want to pull it all out, but I don't have to. Okay, I am going to take the camera off here. Well, let me pause it a minute and go find an 11 millimeter. Okay, that is not an 11 in this truck. It's a 10. There's, so there's a 10 millimeter bolt right here for the door handle. There's nothing underneath this plug. For the door handle, anyway. And then... Look right in there, there's a bolt there, and there's a bolt right there, or a nut, sorry. Nuts in here, and there's a bolt on the in, on this side one right here. This will be a bolt that comes out, and these are two nuts that will come off of these studs right here on the door handle. So, right there, those two. Um, and if you look down in here, I'm trying to shine a light on it. There's a plug right here for the keypad. Just a gray plug that is stuck in here, held up with a plastic clip, and it's got a block off uh, cap on it that we need to get unplugged. And again, it's just got a little tab that you squeeze and usually these are hard to get unplugged well that one wasn't too bad so that comes off of the plug for the keypad now the keypad is sitting there exposed that the plug is ready for the keypad to be plugged in they're all wired for it if they've got remote keyless entry they're wired for the keypad so let me get set back up on the tripod and see if we can get this other or this old door handle off okay i did go ahead and just put tape all around the door handle because there's no sense of taking a chance on you know putting a new scratch in there if you can be careful as you can and if you're working with a really nice truck you should do that anyway my truck's got 250,000 miles on it but i'm not going to intentionally put a scratch on it and you'll see why I did that when we get this thing unbolted here. So let me see if this is a good spot. I think it is. I don't know. Let's see. So we're going to go ahead and get this bolt out. It really sucks not having a cameraman. Somebody that can make sure that this stays on you all the time. So that's just a real short bolt. I'm going to step around here and make sure you're seeing it. Just a real short bolt comes out of that door handle right there. Now we're going to go... to these two inside ones. So 
dark outside already. And it sure makes a difference in here when there's no light coming in the windows. These turn kind of hard all the way out too, but that's okay. And we're going to reach in there and get the rest of it with our fingers so it doesn't fall. Okay, now the door handle's loose. Trying not to drop this nut. Got it. Okay. Well, let me see where you guys are at. Even these tripod legs get in my way. Now, there is a rod that's, there's two rods. There's one connected to the door lock cylinder, and then there, of course there's one connected to the door handle. But I'm not going to take them off down inside the vehicle, because I or inside the door, because I can't really show you what to do in there. There's some clips in there, but there's no way I can reach in and show you what I'm going to do, what I'm doing. So we're going to do it from the outside, and we're going to have to have a pick, because there's a little C-clip. I'm going to look back here again, make sure we're on it. Okay. So just pull the door handle out. And we got to kind of push down on it to get that spring-loaded door handle. Like when you pull this out, you know, it pushes it down. And the door, it pushes the rod down to unlatch the door. We got to get it out of there. There. We just need to get this out from underneath the door there. And now there's a little C-clip right here that holds this lock thing on. And I like to take the C-clip off because there's a plastic thing holding this rod. And I'll show you. If you try to take it out of a plastic clip, you're going to break it. So I'm just pushing up on this C-clip. Right there, I got this C-clip off of there. And now this will come right off of the door lock cylinder. It'll slide right off, see that? And now this, I'm just gonna slowly rotate it off of this rod. You see this orange clip? I'm just gonna slowly rotate this down and off this rod. So, here is the plastic one that I don't want to break. That's why I leave it on there. Because if you try to take it, the rod out of it, more than likely you're going to snap this plastic. So, now, we've got to take my original lock cylinder out. And it's got this little spring clip right here it just pulls out and I think it should come right out yeah so remember that this is my original one with no keypad I'm going to set it over here this is the one from the junkyard we're going to take this one out get rid of it and grab my original one. Stick it back in there. 
and put this wire clip back through there and it's in now it's got let's make sure I did it right my key so that is the correct one now we don't need this anymore I hope not Before I put this in there, I want to show you guys this too. This little plastic push pin right here, there is already a hole in the door that once we get this in there, we're going to pop it in. And then this one is going to go, I believe, right here and this hole right before it plugs in. So if I remember right, taking it out of the junkyard. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, feed the wire in here. Go around the back side of all of the the rods that's here. And I'm not sure what's easiest to do first, whether to put this rod back through here or put this on. So I guess we'll just go the way we came off. Let's see. I'm not going to put this in yet, I'm, the wire. I'm going to do it after I get this back on. Again, just slowly rotate it around there and it's back on. Now, I'm going to try to feed this through here. I feel like it's in my way when I go to put this clip back on. I just took it off in the junkyard and wasn't paying too much attention. But we'll get it, I promise. All right, let me see if it's best to go ahead and put this on first. That's why I take the door up because I keep bumping it. Okay, now we got to get that clip again and try to get it back on there without dropping it, that C clip. It'd take me a while at the assembly line to get this down, I think. And this is kind of rounded, like that way. You put this side down on it so it catches it. Okay, it was on there all the way. I just wanted to make dang sure. It's on there all the way. I've tried my best to pull it off and it won't come off. So I had to have a flashlight in my mouth while I was looking down on it. I just couldn't see. So now 
let's see if we can get this wire harness. Remember, I said go around the back side. The only other rod in there you got to go around is the door lock up and down plunger. So, get around it. Get the rest of it in there. It's fighting me. Now, remember, we got to push down on this rod to get this top top one in. See if there's a couple little things that go back. I'm looking in the camera at the same time. There's two little tabs that that put the door sheet metal between the door handle and them. I can show you on this one better. These things right here are what I'm trying to get slipped in to get the sheet metal of the door between the door handle and it. I'm going to look from the inside and see what's going on. Hmm. Wire harness might have been in the way. I don't know. There we go. You just got to get a little aggressive with those little tabs I was talking about. They pop up behind there. I'm going to look again to make sure you guys are still with me. And I think you are. Now, like I said, there is a little push pin and there's a spot for it right below the door handle. I'm going to try to stick it in there. When I get my hand in there, I can't. It gets, puts it in the way. It blocks my side. There. You hear it clip in? It went right where it was supposed to. Now, this one, like I said, should yeah, pop through right there. So yeah, they both clipped in right where they're supposed to. This one right here is a locator. So then we can go ahead and plug the keypad in. Okay. Actually, Now I'm going to take a wire tie and I'm going to tie it to this harness just to make sure. Yeah, maybe. Can I unplug it? No, not really. I may take a wire tie and, and tie that up to make sure the window's not going to hit it. But I honestly don't think it can. Okay, let's put our bolts back in, nuts and bolts.
Mm -hmm. That one looks like it's lining up too. Let's see what the actual door handle looks like it's in the right spot. It does to me. I'm going to tighten up these nuts on the inside before I tighten that one up. Opening and closing. Oops, sorry. Looks pretty good on there. Where's my key? So that works. Let's plug in. What am I do with that? I'm gonna plug this back in before I do any programming anyway on that thing in case it messes something up. Honestly, I would feel better even plugging in the the mirror switch so I can pop it out of the door. Okay, I did pop this mirror switch out. Two, just so it's plugged in. I was thinking when I did that one for a customer, that one I did take to the dealer. I was thinking that the keypad at least lit up when you opened the door. It's lit up right now. See if it goes off when the dome light does. Dome light hasn't gone off yet. There it went. Yeah, keypad went off when the dome light did. So, yeah, I opened the door and the keypad lights back up. But, okay, I got my key. So, if the keypad was going to work, by hitting 7890 together, it should lock the doors. And it's not doing it. So that means it's plugged in, but... It's not programmed. The body control module is not programmed to let it know the keypad's on it. So that's what we're getting ready to do now. And I took notes. So let me try to get this set up in that little tripod so you guys can see what I'm doing on the computer. Okay, guys. So I've got you set up there the best way I think I can. I hope you can see what's going on on the laptop here. Um... We're going to plug this thing into the OBD2 port of the truck. I hope I don't knock you guys over. This is what they would do if you took it to the Ford dealer, which I've done before. I've done it to have the keypads activated and the trailer brake controllers when you add them. Now we're going to put the other end of that in the laptop. And like I said, I already downloaded the software. You get two free months of it. You can actually buy it for like 12 bucks a year. It's not bad, but I didn't even know if I'd be able to use this. So it wasn't that easy for me to download the software, but I'm not a computer guy, but I did figure it out. You know how? By watching YouTube videos. So I'm going to go up here on this icon right here, this four scan right here. open it up and this is just says use a computer or another device while operating a vehicle is not safe blah 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 well we kind of know that so we're gonna hit okay and i've got notes here too actually that i wrote down watching the guy do this um 
we got to put the key in the ignition and turn it to run. Don't start the truck. Just turn it to the run position. And I've got the automatic headlights turned off, so we're not running the battery down. Uh, so they tell us to go down here and connect to vehicle. Please make sure all the following conditions are met. Ignition key is on. It asked me this the other day, so I'm going to hit OK. Now it takes a little bit for this stuff to come up. Uh, actually, since my truck was plugged in here, it's it's in the records, I guess. It saved it because it's saying 2012 3.5 liter. So I'm going to hit yes. Then it loads this stuff up. <clears throat> And is it done loading? I don't know. Sometimes it takes a while, they said, for it to load them all. It probably takes a lot longer on newer vehicles with a lot more crap on them. I mean, this truck is, well, 10 years old, 12 or 11 years old. I think it's done. So now we're going to go to this little icon right here that looks like a sideways square or a diamond shape. And in one of my notes, BDYCM, that's what that means for body control module. And it's got module configuration, but we want to go in as built format. And we're going to go down here to this little arrow in the corner that says play. And then it's just basically warning you that if you make changes, it's not their fault if you screw something up. Okay, now it, it all read... It says here in my notes... Somewhere it said save. Okay. I don't see where it says save, and I don't know how to go back, but we're in the right one. So remember, if I screw this up, I'm the dumb one, because you can wait till the dealer can get you in and take it in. That piece cost me like a little like $32 and change off Amazon. So I think it would probably cost me 40 some dollars for a half hour labor at the Ford dealership. So I'm, I'm still money ahead if this works. So like I said, it, it's telling us to go to this line here, 7261501, 7261501. And see, it says without the keypad, it's four zeros, zero one, zero one, four five. Four zero, zero one, zero one, four five. So with keypad is three zeros and a one in this first column. So we're going to go. I've lost it. Right here. I'm going to hit backspace. I'm right here. I'm going to hit backspace and I'm going to change that zero to a one and then it immediately jumped over to the next set of letter or numbers but we're not going to do anything there so I'm going to go over here to this 45 and I'm going to hit backspace and I'm going to change that five to a six and Okay, make changes and click right. Let me look at it again, just to make sure where it's what it says it's supposed to be with the keypad. Zero 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 one, zero 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 one, zero one zero one. 
four six. So that's what I got four six. So I'm going to hit right. Body control module just made noises. Says cycle the key off and back on and hit OK. I don't see. Click right. Said it may pop up that it's a typo or whatever, but it did not do that. It says go down to the bottom here and hit stop. Stop service procedure. And then it says to disconnect from the vehicle, but I don't. I don't see those where it, where it was down there before where it said connect to vehicle. I don't see where any option where it says disconnect. So I think that's weird. But I made the change and it went back to this weird stuff here. What is this up here? Okay. We can go back into it and look at it and see if it's still, it's highlighted. So we're gonna hit play. It's warning me again. It's still got the numbers that I changed it to, to telling it that it does have the keypad on it. So it looks like it did save it. So again, we're going to go down here and hit stop. And I don't see anything where it says to disconnect from the vehicle like it did on that YouTube video. So I'm going to turn the key off. And I'm just going to unplug it out of the OBD2 port and the computer. Um, and hope that we haven't screwed something up here. I've got, okay, let me get this phone out of here and this is spring loaded. So let me pause it. All right, guys. So I guess we're ready to try it. This thing's saying now no adapter found. So it's disconnected. I still don't understand why it didn't say, it didn't let me disconnect from the vehicle like it did on that other one. This is maybe it's just a new version of this thing. It, Anyway, I got the owner's manual out, and I knew that these were in here. This code here is the card that was for that stick-on keypad. And believe it or not, even though this truck didn't have a keypad on it, it's got the factory keyless entry card under it. And if you don't have this card in your owner's manual, or in owner's manual at all, I don't know what people do with those. But if you need to find your code, right down there in the passenger kick panel, if you pull that fuse cover off that's where your body control module is and you just stick your head around there and right on the outside of it there's a white rectangular sticker with black a black five digit printed code and that's the code for your truck so let's get out here and see if this thing works where's my key okay i got my key well the passenger side window is down anyway like i said so, door's unlocked right now. All right, so if this worked, we should be able to hit 7890 together and the door should lock. <laughs> Look at that. They locked. It wouldn't do that before. Let me find my code. I'm not going to show it to you guys, of course, but... And it works just like that. Even the parking lights flashed. Cool. I'm going to lock it again. It works just like that. Awesome. So normally it's always 7890 to lock your truck. 
when you go through your code, you go through your five digit code and it always opens the driver's door. And if just the driver's door opens within five seconds, if you hit the three, four button on any Ford, it's going to open the passenger side door or the other, all three doors on your vehicle. It's going to open all the other doors. If hitting three, four after five seconds of hitting the original code. But once you hit that five digit code, it's always going to open the, the driver's door. But in this case, and this truck was programmed like that when I got it. And you can actually do it in the instrument cluster with the steering wheel buttons. You can go in there and you can choose whether you want driver door unlock. Uh, what they, I don't remember what they call it. But you can have it to where it just opens the driver's door. Same with the, with the key fob. But this one has always just opened both doors at the same time. And I never went in there and changed it because I guess it doesn't matter. You don't have to hit it twice. The the key fob to open the passenger door. It's already been set on here and I never changed it. So, wow, man, that thing was like $32 from Amazon and it would have cost me more than that at the dealer. So it did work and you can do other things. I'm not going to go in there um, and show you all that right now. Let's get in here. Hey guys, I want to do this real quick and throw it in this video before I post it. It's actually the next day. Um, I want to show you how to put in your own personal five-digit code. So put in the factory code and within five seconds hit the one, two button and the doors will lock and unlock to confirm that it took, that it's in program mode. So then put in any five-digit code that you want and then wait a second and it'll lock and unlock again and confirm that it took it. So I'm going to put my code in. Now I'm going to hit the one, two button. So it's in program mode. Now I put my gray truck in there. So now it's got the gray truck one in there too. And it never loses the factory code either. So you can open it with either one. It never forgets the factory one so that's how you do it i'll edit this in there and i'll get this video posted for you guys but this thing these spreadsheets and things are all over the internet if you can find them and you can go in there and you can change things like so your um say you want your fog lights to stay on while your high beams are on you can go in there and change that so they will but don't do it because i hate bright lights um like like i said you know this truck already has the trailer brake controller but if you guys go back in my videos you'll see where i installed one and had to take it to the dealer and have it programmed i could have done that if i would have had this thing i could have done it myself for that customer without taking it to the dealer um you can go in there and change all kinds of things. Um, your radio, something about your radio settings. You can just Google your, your year, make a model. You can go online and, and find that stuff. And there's all kinds of things like that. Sorry, I'm excited that that worked. I just can't believe that I did that. So I'll shut up. Let's get, let me get this set back up. Let's get this door panel back on. All right, guys, just to let you know, I turned the key on and ran the window down and the window's nowhere near close to that keyless keypad wire so we don't have to worry about it it's fine i'm going to stick this back up on here go ahead and unplug this stuff unplug the mirror switch and stick it back in the door Just put your little hooks right there in the bottom. There's three going across there. And then you can just put this uh, cable right back in its hole, stretch it around, clip it right back in its holder. Just pay attention when you take it off. Plug the mirror back in, the mirrors back in. 
get our wires up through here for the windows. Here's what I always struggle with is this door lock plunger. These things always make me look stupid. on the front did not catch. Okay, there it did. Let's make sure that the door opens and closes on the inside before we go any further. I'm excited. That's great. As long as everything else still works like it's supposed to. Um, all right. Put this one in. Like I said, you can use power tools. You have my permission. Just don't overdo it. Clip this piece back in. I like you probably need to clip the front end first or aim it in first. And plug these in. I've watched them pop a lot of those in up at the Rouge plant in Dearborn going down the assembly line. Put this little rubber Make sure you guys can still see me. Yeah, we're going to put this little rubber. Did I tighten that? I think I did. Where's that? I know I checked the inside ones. Yep, yep, it's tight. So I put this plug back in. And put this one back in. And this thing, the cover. And the two little six millimeter ones back in the bottom. this stuff off here look at that guys a factory keypad and I have to worry about locking the keys in my truck anymore let me turn it away Try it one more time. It locks. And it unlocks. I'm pretty dang happy about that. Let's start the truck and make sure there's no weird codes or anything in the instrument cluster saying I messed something up with that.
Nope. Everything went off. That's another thing. That little seat belt guy. That guy never has dinged at me. And they say that you can turn him off in there. So I've got a feeling. I was told that this truck was owned by a Ford Tech. So I got a feeling that that seat belt guy has already been disabled in that as built data was done when he had the truck is what I'm thinking. But anyway, that's awesome. Just get this thing. I got it off Amazon. Like I said, I think it was $32 and change. I did the two month free trial. I, like I said, I did struggle doing the download and, and running it and all that crap because I'm not a computer guy, but I did get it done by watching YouTube videos. It wasn't that bad. And you just seen how easy it was to program that. My mind's blown. This truck has a keypad on it now. Now I can call the Ford dealer and tell them that I don't need that appointment next week. So, yeah, they were. I called three Ford dealers, and they're all three booked out for two weeks. So I thought, well, I'm just going to order that thing with Amazon Prime, and I got it in two days. So, uh, one more thing. The first time I did this for a customer, I was shocked that it didn't work because I've changed a lot of door handles on Ford pickups. They started doing this in 1997 and you could just get a door handle and plug it in and get your code off of the keyless entry module back then is what they called it. Now it's all part of the body control module, but I did that all the way up through 2008. And so 2009, they changed it and you can't just do that now. You got to have it programmed at the dealer or do what we just did on the computer with that little device. So this is all the same. I believe 2009 through 2014, and I guarantee you something changed in 15. They also put the keypad up here, but you can also change this piece on those 15s and add the keypad. You can do that on explorers. You could do it on so many things. So that's it. This truck's got a keypad now and I couldn't be happier. That ugly stick on thing gone. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video if, if you don't even have an F-150, but if you've got an F-150, you see now how easy it is to add that. And if you're scared to do that, just go to the dealer. It shouldn't charge you any more than a half hour labor. That's all they've ever charged me. So what's it gonna be? Well, around here you may pay 50 bucks, but maybe 60. Getting the bigger cities is gonna be more, but it's worth it to me. I got that keypad and a couple of other little things that take the junkyard. He charged me 10 bucks for that stuff. So I got a keypad and everything for 10 bucks. And then that thing for 32 something. So I've got $42 in this project and I couldn't be happier. So I hope you guys like this video. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you've got any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Just ask. Thank you very much for watching.